back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we talk about the latest news happening in the MCU, DCEU, and in film. A lot of things have transpired over the week. I was going to record the show with Brian on Wednesday, and I said, you know what, let's wait. Let's wait till Friday. Let's let this, you know, stuff come in. And man, did we make the right decision. A lot of stuff going on with Warner Brothers. Um, I have an interesting question in here, in here for you, Brian, later. Uh, we're going to talk about all of this and what it means, what it could mean, what we've been talking about for quite some time now. To talk about this with me is Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? What's not going on? I had to head to the Sanctum this week to uh, <laughs> study the, the books of the mystic arts because there's some some big big changes happening. We need to we need to we need to you know check the skies and see what's going on. And see, it's uh it's incredible stuff. I mean, stuff we have been talking about for a while, but I think we're we're officially now in in motion with uh, yes. a real change to the way business is going to be done and the way we're going to consume uh, the the shows that we love. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, and I'm. I, I mean, I can't. And I, we said it last time on on the show. 2021 is going to be crazy, and we're getting a little bit of glimpse of that. Um, we're going to keep it the same format. Talk about the industry news, and a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about in the industry news is going to probably involve a lot of the stuff that's going on in DCU, Marvel, and things of that nature. So um, we'll go over that. We're going. We'll go over some specific Marvel stuff. Um, and DC is going to be involved in the industry news because it's, ha- it, 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 it's, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Um, before we do that, I just want to say thank you to all you guys for subscribing, uh, for hitting that like button and hitting that notification bell. I really, really, really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything. It's valuable to us, and we're going to keep the show going. So a few days ago, Brian sent me a... a an article. Warner considers more HBO Max releases. Then a few days later, they're releasing everything for 2021. Brian, what did you think when you read this article? So... So many linkages here. The studio of Chris Nolan, greatest proponent of the theatrical experience. The studio that test drove Tenet as a big blockbuster film for everyone this year to see what was possible during the pandemic. And don't think that that's not connected to what just happened. Takes the big leap, takes the big leap. Yeah. And I kept it, th- and then, you know, industry up in arms afterwards, no surprise. And I kept thinking about the end of Batman Begins. So you remember they're on the monorail, it's headed toward Wayne Tower. Gordon's in the Batmobile. I'm thinking, you know, he, blo- he, he blows up the one support. That's Wonder Woman 1984, <laughs> falling away. Raz al Ghul gets distracted. Raz is the industry. Bruce flips the tables and he asks him, have you finally learned to what is, do what is necessary? And he says, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> That's basically what Warner Brothers <laughs> did to the, to the theater industry. Exactly. Is that we're not going to kill you, but we don't have to save you either. Yeah, exactly. And so I think this is, you know, we've talked about what are, what are theaters going to do versus what are studios going to do. And the, the constant in this is the economics are moving away from the theatrical experience in some form towards streaming, towards studios. And this is kind of the, the, the grand play. And I think the only thing that surprised me was they didn't even wait to find out how Wonder Woman 1984 oh, no. did. They just oh. said, we're going to take all the chips. Yeah. And in doing so, I think what they did was they made this service a must have for anyone who likes movies. There is no oh, other yeah. service oh, yeah. that can give you, including Wonder Woman 1984, 18 big budget pictures that are brand new day of release in the next 12 months. Suicide Squad? Doom? Godzilla Matrix, versus Kong? Matrix 4? 
what? I'm not going to pay to see this? Of course I am. Of course I am. If you haven't subscribed, you will subscribe, period. And this is exactly what they want. This is exactly what they need now. Because in an article written by Jason Kalar, I believe his last name is. Um, no, sorry. Written by Anthony D. Alessandro from Deadline. Warner, Brother, Warner Media CEO Jason Kalar said a lot of key things in this article. He said, we're here for the long term. You listen to that. Palpatine in this. Long term. In terms of theatrical exhibition and obviously in investing heavily in motion pictures and also investing heavily in the marketing of those, of those motion pictures. Long term. He also goes on to say, we do believe and others might have a different opinion. That's where the people throwing their hands up in the air, you're, you're playing with fire sort of thing. Nah, man, this is what it is. Just This is just what it is. And he says something, when I, when I read this, I was like, he said, this is the way. He didn't say, I think. He didn't say, he, I believe. He put on his Mandalorian <laughs> helmet and said, this is the way. That's what yeah. he did. <laughs> he didn't even, he, I, 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 he didn't say, I believe. He said, this is the way to do the most important thing we can for the theatrical exhibition community, which is to provide theme a steady stream of new and fresh movies and motion pictures that they can count on and cut and consumers can count on. It's something we're vested in and will continue to be. Listen, they're speaking the same sort of thing. Disney's talking about, right? They're just announcing what they're doing. We're going to get a little bit of that December 10th when Disney has their thing going. Um, and he goes on to state the obvious. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We don't know when this is going to end. Right? And we wanted to go away quickly. You know, that's why those are all those delays. We wanted to go away. Let's give it another three months or four months. Let's delay it. Boom. We had that several times. And finally, we don't know when this is going to this is going to end. So this is what we're doing. Everything coming out 2021. You have anything to say, Brian? Well, let's think about from a subscriber perspective. So they took away the free trial. We predicted that. We knew that was going to happen. So now you're paying $15 a month. And I would bet there are going to be a lot of signups before December 25th. Oh, if yeah. you were even on the fence because of Wonder Woman 1984, you're like, wait, I get what? The next 12 months? Okay. So think about it this way, which is we have talked about how crowded 2021 was going to be. Even if we got a vaccine on a widespread basis, there, was, there weren't going to be enough theaters to release all of the films that were in, in the pipeline. There just wasn't going to be, which means if you're a studio, you are going to be marketing these films multiple times. Remember, we heard like with um, uh, the James Bond film that yeah. they basically have already lost 50, 60, 70 million dollars because they'd be marketing a different release date. Studios don't want to do that. They don't want to do three, four rounds in each of these films. They want to do one round with a set yeah. date. But in order to make that make sense, they got to feel like we're getting the audience we need. And the reality is, you know, if you're Warner Brothers, is it a fun slate of movies? Yes. Would they have run into a lot of problems if they were up against the Marvel slate at the same? Yes. Uh, so in a way, this... It wouldn't have worked them... out for either one of them. Exactly. They both would have made less than they would have otherwise. So now what I see here that is great is the biggest event of the year for Disney was Hamilton. Not even a new, it was sort of new-ish, right? It was shot yeah. like a film, but not even a new idea. Yeah, That drew more subscribers than anything else. And, and actually, I think Warner cited that in yes, their yes, decision. Yes, yes. So what they're saying is, well, we have Hamilton 18 times over, more than once per month. Now, some of these are $200 million films. Some of these are $20, $30 million films. But if you know you have a new studio level, A-list headline film, at least once a month, and you can do the simple math, 18 is more than 12, mm -hmm. it means you're gonna sign up and you're not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. And that's it, game, set, and match. They've got you on the service. And as I said, 
not even Disney is at the moment, not even Disney is giving you 18 new films yeah. over the next 12 months. You don't have to watch all of them, but my guess is you're going to watch more of them yeah. than you would have if they were just in theaters. Yeah. Because you already have the service. Yeah. So, if, so like one of these films we didn't talk about is a smaller budget, like Denzel Washington crime movie. Mm -hmm. Is that a film I would have gone to the theater for sure? Probably No. Not. Is it a film I 100% will watch as part of this service? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Listen, he also he also stated something very interesting that I that I sort of interpreted myself when I read it. Um, this is a hybrid model. Hybrid usually for me means a temporary thing that we're doing until we cross over to the new thing. This is DVD VHS hybrid. Until the old stuff that said we don't need it anymore. New stuff. We believe economically first and most importantly is the right thing to do for fans. It is the right thing to do for the exhibition and the right thing to do for talent actors and all these people that work on these films. So they've already told you what they're going to do. And they've, you know, come 2021, especially, you know, come December 25th, when we finally see Wonder Woman on, 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 on screen at, at, at homes. And those, for those people who are lucky enough to see it on, in theaters, we're going to be waiting to see what the, um, sort of uh, reaction it's going to uh, um, get from fans if the movie... I a is great for those at, um, at Warner Brothers executives. They're going to look at numbers, how many subscribers they're going to get off of this, you know, and what do they do overseas? Um, I'm interested, interested to know, Brian, what do you think Disney is going to do on December 10th? Uh, I don't think they're going to knee jerk anything, to be honest, in, in direct response to this. They clearly have a streaming strategy. You know, their existing IP is coming in was superior to to what Warner's and HBO Max had and their subscription yeah. model had worked better. Quite honestly, a lot more subscribers. Yeah. So, again, they can come at it differently. I, I'm not sold that, the, you know, we heard the rumor and we talked about it last time, like, would they move Black Widow to streaming? They, I think worst case they will leave the door open for that in the q a they're not going to close that off they're not naive they know those yeah. movies are gold mines yeah, yeah but i don't necessarily think they're going to commit to say you know necessarily every single film we're going to make in the next 12 months is automatically going to have this same kind of um this same kind of structure so i'm not i'm not as convinced of that i think i think at this point the presentation is mostly written and they'll get questions about this but I think what they'll say is that look, it just it validates what they're already doing in terms of putting more resources into streaming, and just another example of that. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I think it, it all of this does move the needle. If we tie it back to the MCU, it all it all moves the needle toward getting those films onto streaming services faster. Yeah, it does. It does, and I I think the bar. You know, the bar for this to really work, I, re I read some press that's talked about, hey, this is kind of a, you know, everyone's losing. Theaters are definitely losing, but Warner's is losing. I don't think Warner Brothers is losing. I, yeah. I don't see it that way. I, you know, I, I, I went back through their history and, you know, basically the last five to 10 years, the, on average, their annual per film budget is somewhere between 50 and 80 million dollars so call it 60 to 7 60 let's call it 60 so 17 films 60 million dollar budget it's a billion dollars of production cost tack on maybe i don't know what you want to do 500 million of marketing mm -hmm. 1.5 billion dollars mm -hmm. it's going to cost you 180 dollars a year to have this service mm -hmm. so it basically means you need 9 million subscribers paying for the full year to make up a billion and a half mm -hmm. that's it yeah. i mean Disney's already at 70 something million subscribers. Well, we I said think that last time. I, Netflix is more than twice that. You yeah. don't think they're going to get more than 10 million subscribers? Yeah. I mean, and HBO Max is going global next year. It's not even available overseas. Not oh, available, yeah. we'll, not available we'll, on We'll Roku get into that yet. too. Yeah. So to me, I think they're going to make back the billion and a half a lot faster than people think. Yeah. 
Definitely. And instead of just uh, not doing anything or going into some deal that really doesn't work out for them or waiting, it doesn't make sense. They may, I, I think this is, this is the Warner brothers. I think right now has people in place that are looking at this logically and of course, with the intent of making money, but also to uh, please the people that are going to subscribe and watch the stuff that they put out. It's not just money. It's a, a lot of it has to do with money, but in order to get that, you got to accomplish this and you have to do it the right way. And I think this is what we're getting because they're they're making moves. One is a, a Wonder Media has a certainly uh, ca captivated the 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 news uh, this week. And if you think about the timeline in terms of you know how fast this news came out, they've been thinking about this for a while. This they didn't make these decisions like like this. They've been talking about this. They've been talking. This this just shows you that they've been thinking about it, and and to finally release their their plan certainly tells us that they have been obviously watching and doing some research on their own to figure out a way to um, do what other people have been successful at. So in, let me in ask doing. you. A, let me ask you a question. Um, there are movies on this list that I think were made for theaters of course godzilla versus kong great example right that's a film that i would argue more than half of what makes it interesting would be sitting in an imax theater with a bunch of people watching those two duke it out on yeah. screen yeah so let's assume there's a vaccine that we can all access by next summer mm -hmm. and the reviews for this are mixed, which is what they were for the last one, King of the Monsters, King of the Monsters. Mm -hmm. If you watch this on streaming service the week, the day that it comes out, and you like it, do you think you'd be more likely to then take your family to the theater to see it again for the big screen experience? If Things are safe and we can go. I'm saying yes. Yeah, where yeah. Everything is normal. We're okay. back to full normal in my okay. scenario. If it gets weak reviews, I'm watching it. And if I enjoyed it, yes, I'd like to see it in the big screen. And, and that's, I actually think that's one thing people haven't talked about. Because yeah. I think it's easy when you have great reviews and like a an MCO movie. Okay, yeah. you're automatically going to a theater to see that. Yeah. Yeah. But if the reviews are weak, but you kind of know, well, this is the kind of movie that critics don't typically like and I might like. Yeah. I actually wonder if theaters might get some additional business out of this on the back end, just yeah. not on opening weekend, because people yeah. actually check it out on their service first. Yeah. And they're like, hey, I want to go see that yeah. on a big screen. I wonder. But in order for that to, I think, work, Brian, the theaters, have, again, and we spoke about it in the past, the experience at the theaters have to be different. It has to be different than before. I think it will be, uh, we'll see. But uh, <clears throat> in order for that to be a, a certain possibility, uh, the movie theaters have to be, or the movie going experience has to be a little different. One other thing I would say, mm -hmm. Warner Brothers, I think is trying to play a little bit nice with the theaters by saying this is a pandemic response yes. and a 2021 only decision. Yes. Yeah, I don't buy that. For I don't buy that for one second. Because if it's more profitable, no. 2021 looks like, yo, we're back in business doing it this way. What are we talking about? What? Do oh, you... we didn't even mention. We didn't even <laughs> mention the Snyder Cut, which doesn't count as a theatrical release, but that's going on the service, so that's going to take up one. There's no way they don't get to the end of 2021 and say this went way better than we thought. So some version of this is what we're gonna do every year. To me, that's a that's a lock. It's yeah, a lock. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, Casey Bloy, with oh, Bloys, Casey Bloys, Chief Content Officer at HBO Max, in an article written in Deadline. They are exploring.
they're expanding. HBO Max is expanding, like you just, as you said earlier. They're expanding globally, and they are thinking about what characters can they do that are non-U.S. characters, right? So they they, they want to build uh, uh, on top of what they already have upcoming in the DC series, and they want to expand it, and they want to have their Shang Chi's, they want to have their Black Panther. They want to have these uh, Kamala Khan type characters to, you know, get other people subscribed to their to their to their platform. Um, do you know of any? Uh, is there are there a lot of DC uh, characters that are non US that you know? Of? I found this article really interesting and cryptic in a way. So I've seen the interpretation that. They were intending to say we could make Superman in 10 different countries using 10 different ethnicities. And I, I'm not totally sure that's what he was trying to say. I doubt it. I think he was more trying to say based on the, whatever metrics they use to track the popularity of certain characters, toys, mm -hmm. you know, what ha shows, whatever that you have in certain countries. Mm -hmm could they make those local more local productions so put more you know if it's a show that um say india has gravitated toward for whatever reason you know could you use more bollywood stars or directors to kind of build your show yeah I think that's one I think I, I really want some follow up on because it, it like I said the article is pretty cryptic we had the previous pod discussion about the idea of changing characters yeah yeah in the idea of uh, and in the idea of getting sort of poc representation yeah, yeah. And, and so forth and this almost seemed like a version of that but more with this local flair that i didn't quite understand um so well he does you know he does go on to say you know he says this and this is an important thing that he said we will and need to be a global service it's an imperative to achieve it's imperative to achieve scale they are locked in into growing this thing because they realize where everything is going um but you know to be that particular also insane dc characters right and they, they want to build on top of this superhero genre that's raking in dough I, I asked you earlier brian how much money does did marvel make on average with the 22 films that they've released over, yeah, so over, over a billion, billion per film, over a billion dollars of global box office per film on average. Although we're not going to see those numbers now, but we're going to certainly see, you know, some numbers for, uh, with regards to subscriptions and, and 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 how many people are actually seeing these things, right? So we're going to certainly get numbers on that, and I think, obviously, because of what's going on. These are the changes that these guys have to make in order to to keep going, right, and and, and survive. If I had to guess what he's trying to get at, it's that we have lived in this world where every show is kind of produced with a U.S. centric idea, right? It either comes out of a Hollywood studio, maybe it's shot in Vancouver, maybe it's shot in London. And I think what he might be trying to say is some of these story arcs and characters might do better if they originated with a showrunner or a director and a casting process that was centered in another place. Mm -hmm. For maybe because it is a really popular character there and therefore maybe there's a local actor who we don't know as, as yeah. American consumers who would be a big draw I see. for international markets. I would be my bet, which would involve remapping the ethnicity of some of the characters, probably in some cases. Uh, it might also just mean instead, you know, they're not going to make 10 Superman shows. Not Superman is a great example, but not 10 shows about one character. They're just going to take one show about that character, but have it originate in South America or okay. originate in Asia. And that'll be the show that all of us access kind of worldwide on the service. Listen, man. If they can make it work, because obviously being different and doing something different than what's already out there and what's successful, um, 
the boys doing something like the boys, you know, different, but still entertaining and well done. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what they, because I feel like they got people in there that are really thinking and, 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 and I don't think Warner Brothers as of late, you know, because if you listen to our previous shows, we will, we will go in on Warner Brothers and what and ask the question, what are they doing? Now they seem to be thinking about this long term and doing the right thing and uh, making some sound decisions that excite the fans and, and makes us all look forward to what else they have in store for us. Well, nothing like crisis and losing money to, to make you be more aggressive, right? And so we talked about the relative strength of Disney in being able to make money in different ways. And I think you're actually seeing that on display here because AT&T, the parent of Warner Brothers, is not in that position. Yeah. AT&T is not going to be out there selling a bunch of toys this Christmas through Disney Store Online. They don't have that. Yeah. So this is the asset they can use to make money. So they played the car. They, they went all in. And I think that's going to be to the benefit of us. It will change the way the business is done. Mm -hmm. But And I think it's a positive, to your point, it's a positive move. And for the first time, it looks like there's a little bit more of a unified plan, which can only be good for yeah. the production of, you know, future shows and characters. So Yeah. It's all hands on deck over there, man. It's all hands on deck. They, they, they're figuring it out. And uh, we can't wait. We definitely can't wait. Um, another note, um, HBO Max ends free trial. <laughs> we knew, we said that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we said that was coming. And, hey, if you stick with us, you'll be all right. <laughs> um, Marvel News. A lot of this also yesterday, by the way, you must have had the time stone to kind of go forward to see there would be all this news to tell oh, us. Yeah. We, should, we should wait. We should wait two days to tape. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, and, and listen, it worked out perfectly. Marvel News, man. So I guess let's give a little bit of context. When Daredevil and Luke Cage and all these shows were on Marvel, we were excited because we thought there were there was some affiliation because when you watch the shows it's not like they entirely ignored what happened in the movies right if it, it had some except for iron fist everything else felt like there was some connection to the mcu and we thought there were great shows especially daredevil season three and then it gets and punisher uh and, and jessica jones and a little bit of luke cage then I guess we start getting the cancellation alerts. Netflix cancels this. Netflix cancels that. And we were like all wondering why. And obviously after some time, we realized it's just business. Right? We Disney already knew that they were going this way a long time ago. They were planning on this. And they couldn't continue doing this. And now there was some stipulation. Um that they couldn't use these characters for at least two years right after are you frozen oh yeah you frozen are you frozen oh my no. bad <laughs> oh, my, I thought you were frozen. <laughs> <laughs> um so they can't use mcu can't use these characters for two years the two years is up are they back at marvel yes the right, the rights are okay the rights to the characters. Yep. And so now you hear we're gonna throw the P word out, petitions that we want Charlie Cox back as Daredevil. You and I both agree, and we have spoken in the past before. I think in the last um, on podcast, we were just talking about who will be who will more likely be replaced. Um, but let's just stick to Charlie Cox as Daredevil. I'll ask you once again: Do you believe Marvel is going to recast or take back Charlie Cox as Daredevil? 
My bias is they're going to keep them. You asked me which one I thought would be replaced. Yeah. I leaned Punisher, and yeah. I had my reasons for that. It had nothing yeah. to do with the quality of the performance. It just was a, a view of kind of what's on the landscape. Yeah. Hey, look, you know, petitions, we, we've shown in this industry, petitions can carry weight, um, especially if they grow into other movements. You know, it's almost like, I mean, Zack Snyder should probably get royalties on future petitions that lead to changes in, in the industry because... <laughs> I mean, it worked, right? And now you yeah, see finally, and 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 like you know, th so this petition isn't just for Charlie Cox; it's for the show, right? Yeah. It's for the totality of the Daredevil show yeah. that was on Netflix, but it has drawn the support already. So Clark Gregg, Agent Coulson, he's in um, promoting it. Maybe more importantly, Vincent D'Onofrio, who desperately wants to keep playing the Kingpin, and I think we desperately want him well, to keep playing yeah, the Kingpin, definitely. has yeah. also been he's also signed has been promoting this, so. You know, keep an eye on it. This has legs, and we know Marvel, they don't do what the fans tell them to do, but we do know that they have a very high awareness of what the fans oh, yeah, of course. are saying. And at, the, and at some point, and at some point, these signatures turn into huge numbers. Huge numbers turns into big money. And at the end of the day, although, you know, you have two goals in mind. Please, the fans... Continue making money so you can keep doing this. And uh, I think I'm hopeful that Charlie Cox gets that role back again and they continue where they left off. Because, again, the the, the show didn't seem disconnected from the MCU. I think you can pick back up from where they, they left off and, and, and move forward. Uh, so let's see. Let's see. Comment in the comment section below. I haven't been saying that. People, if you hear this long, hit that like button. Hit that <laughs> like button. Um, tell us what you think well, in the comment section. Yeah. They also, by the way, I don't know contractually how this would, how this could work, but I mean, Kingpin has a slot open in the Spider-Verse. It's sitting right there. <laughs> if they want to use Sinister Six and they want to build Spidey villains over in the Sony Marvel partnership, they've already got the best Kingpin sitting right there if they want to move him into that universe. Yeah, man. I mean, the opportunity, they, again, this is not an, a hard thing to do. You make it harder if you change something that's already popular, right? And if these guys are still able to do it and they're available and the people want them, then there's just no brainer for me, you know? And, and I think they're going to do the right, uh, do the right thing and make that right choice. Hawkeye. He begins shooting. I saw some of the pictures. I mean, the, 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 she was announced uh, or, or rumored to be Kate Bishop a while back. This is just confirmation um, that they've started. Actually, the, the, I think the news is that it's, they started shooting in New York. Yeah. In New York. Again, if you go back to our pre uh, not our previous show, but one of the shows that we were ranking um, uh, the last the less um, interested in in, 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 in show that, that is going to come out from Disney and Hawkeye was way down a, a, at the bottom. But it would change if the story was different. If they We still don't know kind of what's going on. Obviously, we know they're setting up Kate Bishop to be a part of the new Avengers, you know, the young Avengers. We know, we know that that's all starting up. Um, and this is the beginning of that. I, I like that aspect to it, but w the, the whole storyline of what's going on, because how many episodes are we going to get? Like six or eight, right? Pro most most probably. Six is what we know. Uh, we don't know whether it's more than one season, yeah. so we'll see. So uh, there's really not much to say, than just to say that they started. And, and listen, they started, and most likely by the end of 2021, we're going to probably get that, that, that series. So um, they're moving. Well, let's go through a couple of these castings because as yeah. usual, Marvel finds a way to take what you don't think you might be interested in and I think at least get you a little more intrigued. So Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop, my only comments would be, she looks like Kate Bishop. <laughs> looks good, got the purple on, yeah. got the ponytail, but she really looks like Kate Bishop. Yeah. Uh, so ni nice job there. 
Florence Pugh, I thought that was notable. A little crossover from Black Widow. Did not hear any talk that that was going to happen. Now, obviously, we know Hawkeye and Black Widow is, are very close throughout yeah. the MCU process, but seeing her actually in the show as a as a lead character, I thought was notable. Yeah, Makes me a little more curious about yeah. um, how they're going to pull that off. And they get a couple of very credible actors. Vera Farmiga is going to play Kate Bishop's mom. And then... Um, something that you 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 know you were looking for sort of a build out of the of the Ronin sort of storyline. I don't yeah, know if we'll, yeah. this is a clue that we'll get that, but Tony Dalton as Duquesne, who sort of taught Hawkeye how to use a sword mm -hmm. and actually played the role of swordsman in the comics, is actually in this show as well. I'm oh, nice. I would guess flashbacks. I would guess you see like Hawkeye's training, and that then translates to Kate Bishop's training. But so that's sort of interesting. Um, I can see that happening. I thought other sort of breadcrumbs to keep an eye on. So they cast an actor who I'm not familiar with, Fra Fee, I think is the name, as Clown. Mm -hmm. Now, Clown is connected to all, basically is connected to any sort of mafia organization in the Hawkeye comics, but is connected to the tracksuit mafia, mm -hmm. um, which is notable because there was a picture of a golden retriever who everyone assumes yes. is Lucky. Yes, and Hawkeye saves Lucky from the tracksuit mafia in Hawkeye issue one. So Lucky the pizza dog is apparently in the show. But then the other breadcrumbs that I kind of got my mind wondering was, so you have an, an actress we've never heard of, Alakwa Al Cox, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing her first name, mm -hmm. as Maya Lopez or Echo, who's notable because she's both Native American and deaf. So that's a very rare combo in the, in the Marvel sort of library. However... Yeah. She's the only character on the list who is not from the Hawkeye comics. She mm -hmm. is a Daredevil verse character. There you and go. the show is being filmed in New York. I'm just, I'm not saying I know anything. I'm just pointing <laughs> out that they cast someone who has never been in really the Hawkeye storyline in the comics, pulled her from the Daredevil verse, and they're shooting the show in the place where Daredevil lives. I, I just, What's if you want to make this show all of a sudden become a lot more interesting, oh, yeah. put the crossover in a spot where no one expects it. It's, a, it's like that old guy in uh, the Indian dude in 40 Year Old Virgin. He said, it's all about connections. It's all about connections, man. And they're connecting that world. Um, listen, I really do hope that the storyline that they're going to come up with similar to what I had uh, said previously on the show. Cause it would be very, very interesting if that, if it went down that way. Uh, Hawkeye may creep up on those, on that list. We might have to revisit. We might have to revisit. Uh, I wanted to talk about something that I wasn't sure I wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> But when it was said, I was a little bit uh, surprised at the comment or at the statement. Kevin Feige said something that was like, really? How? I was trying to rationalize what he said. He said that Wanda Maximoff has lost more than Thor. Or has lost more than period, anyone, right? Than anyone. Than That's what he anyone. said. Anyone. Anyone. And I'm like, Kevin, why are you trying to sell me on something that doesn't really make sense? What did you think about this? And we can certainly go into what each of them have lost and sort of give Kevin the benefit of the doubt, almost if we can sort of get to the 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 meat of it and, 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 and sort of like understand Kevin where, from where he's coming from. But to me, when I heard that, I simply said, you trying to sell a show that's already selling. You already got me. You don't have to save this. Tell me what you thought about this. Yeah, I'm team Thor on this. I feel like Thor is getting, getting no love. He's lost in space somewhere and needs somebody to give him a hug because this is, you know, I, and that's not to say Wanda Maximoff didn't lose anything, right? He lost a brother. Uh, mentioned lost the fan, lost the parents. Yes, um, you know, experimented on by Hydra. Yes, and then loses loses vision, sort of 
twice, I guess, uh, if you if you want to put it that way, and then loses her reality, I guess, is what we're projecting in, into this. So I'm not saying she didn't lose anything. No. But, I mean, do you want to tally Thor's L's so far? Let's, 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 let's run them down. <laughs> he, I'll tell you one, and then you tell me one. Okay, well, he... He lost his planet. Okay. His home. I, now he's on some crappy ass cliff <laughs> and looks like we're in some other show or something like that back in medi- medieval times. He even told Valkyrie, listen, you take control. I'm out until I can get back my mojo because I, I can't be here. What else did he lose? Lost his, well, mom was murdered. Then he lost uh, his pops. Pops is gone. Loki is sort of dead, at least in his mind. He He's saw it dead, happen. Dead. He saw it happen. He saw his best friend die. So, right. Heimdall's toast. He lost an eye. Right. Lost, he lost half his he lost lost half his people. He couldn't even get satisfaction in killing Thanos. Oh, and that's the other thing I was going to say. And because he hesitated in Infinity War, he had to wear the L for half the universe, at least for a while. Because he didn't go for the head. Because he wanted to rub it in. Because he wanted to rub it in, he failed to give the decisive blow. And look what happened. You're going to tell me that Wanda Maximoff has lost more than anyone? Now he's the dude is fat and he has his two best friends is a rock and some ant-like creature called Meek. Come on, man. Come on, man. But you can't compare the two. So I don't know what the hell you're trying to tell me, Kevin. Don't try to sell this stuff because it ain't sellable. It, it isn't. It isn't. I understand where you're coming from with Maximoff, but... In, in, in terms of overall, you can't you, you you can try to compare the two, but at the end of the day, Thor lost an incredible. How, how does a dude like that meeting him for the first time becomes this? Something crazy happened to him. Maximoff is Maximoff. If I was Maximoff, listen, she has she can change reality. If I had her powers, my man, I'd be okay. <laughs> I'd be like uh, Cypher. I don't want to remember anything. Put me back in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, nah, nah. It does. It, it just doesn't um, fly. So, tell us what you think in the comment section below. Is Kevin trying to sell you this idea uh, or trying to sell the show? Because honestly, one division doesn't need any selling. It sell it, the, the show sells itself. Um, let's talk about, do you want to continue with something else? No, let's do it. Let's talk about the Mandalorian, man. Yes, please. I just want to say, we haven't spoken about it enough. I don't know why we haven't spoken about it. I guess because it's because he watches it at a different time. Well, I don't know. We don't get to watch it both at the same time before the show. Today was the first time I guess we got to watch it um, before the show. And uh, I saw Mandalorian today. This show is freaking... This show is amazing. If you're a Star Wars fan, you can you can't tell me anything about how great this show is with their storytelling with dropping these names if you're a star wars fan and the way they're going about it is like the story is being told and it's being told out of fact there's not a lot of mystery or anything like that this is what's happening this is what happened they introduced these characters last week was Ashoka uh, Tano. 
Who I I have to be honest, I I'm not familiar with the character because I don't really watch the Clone War kind of animated cartoons. I've tried to watch it, just it's, it, there's a lot to catch up on, and I just haven't had the time. But I've seen some of it, and the way they pulled that off when that when Rosario Dawson was first announced as a Shogatano, I was like, yeah, of course. Speaking of fan petitions that worked, that was one. He even admitted that's that's how it happened. Wow. It was a. It was one of those like fan petitions, and then someone did one of the digital recreations of her as the character. That was the genesis of her actually getting the part. Wow. Listen, when we heard the blades, when we heard the, the, the that that sound of the lightsabers, we haven't heard them in a while. And the last time we heard them was in the atrocities that were the trilogy that we got. I want to say atrocities, but they weren't that Star Wars feel to it. And this episode of The uh, uh, the Mandalorian, man, that action sequence, Robert Rodriguez directed that. Huge. Still and badass. man, <laughs> man, he, he delivered a hell of a show today. This show is basically perfect. It's... <laughs> Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm more, I'm, I, I link it to, we're, we're on the verge of getting these MCU shows. We're going to get DC shows. And I think this show, you know, this show is the way. This show is the way. Because John Favreau and Dave Filoni have somehow figured out this perfect balance between understanding Star Wars, the Star Wars that you love, so that if you are a diehard fan, you gobble this up every week mm -hmm. and you sign off every decision as the right decision. Yeah. And if you know nothing about Star Wars, you can just enjoy the ride. Yeah. And even if the names mean nothing to you, yeah. it still looks pretty freaking cool. <sighs> yeah. And it, it just, I, I'm, and we talked about it before. It reminds me so much of these like, you know, old RPG video games. It's really simple. Level one, go to this planet, collect these <laughs> items, meet this person, and then they send you to level two. Yeah, yeah. They don't overthink it. So yeah. you don't have to get caught up in tw all these sorts of twists and plot yeah. things that later on, a lot of shows you can write yourself into a pretzel and now you've got all sorts of holes. Yeah, This is very simple. Yeah. But the characters are compelling. Yes. We care about all of them. And yes. when they give you a canon character, they give it to you exactly, exactly. the way the character is supposed to be. They don't screw around with the look. They don't screw around with the personality or the backstory. Mm. Bo-Katan, Ahsoka Tano, they're exactly what we've been educated to believe they are in the universe it's yeah. perfect yeah. It's per i just hope the mcu and dc are looking at this and saying if you're going to do tv shows and you're going to introduce characters that are beloved yeah don't mess around too much give the people what they want yeah what marvel has that's key is a history to build off of and just go right go forward um with characters and 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 when these characters talk we have some sort of understanding of what they're talking about and be able to follow along um of course you know star wars has that history as well and i think they they are using a lot of that and that's what i i think helps us connect more with the star wars uh with the mandalorian and how, and then also with like the name drops and and the character like Boba Fett come sorry which, for spoilers but could have gone really wrong oh yeah oh yeah but it made sense what they said you could see the scars on his face but it's beautiful yeah he didn't even acknowledge what happened in Return of the Jedi we still don't know and quite yeah. honestly I don't care because yeah, he yeah. was badass. He they did everything you wanted him to be 30 years ago. You're like, oh yeah, that's him. Yeah, man. It was, it was, it was wow. This is this is this is storytelling. This is this is I'm in every week. I can't I, I, I can't remember the day when I can uh say to myself, I can't wait to see this show when it comes out on Friday. 
the next show. We, we don't, we're not binging anything. We're waiting week to week to watch this. They also are, they are uncanny too. I feel like every show has a couple of visual shots. We are just like, wow. Wow. Every week. You see the so, one? The Ahsoka episode, I almost started laughing, but it was in a really happy way when they got to the final showdown. And he's outside in literally an Old West gunslinger showdown with Michael Bean. Michael yeah. Bean, sci-fi <laughs> legend. I keep this around for close encounters, so I'm going to put it on the ground and get shit. And then inside, it was like straight out of um, like a Bruce Lee movie. It was like yeah. a martial arts backdrop, one on one, like a samurai movie, one like shot that way. And it was like, yes. and then in the same episode, you had the brief conflict between Mando and Ahsoka, which had like three money shot visuals in it, where he tries to capture her with the tries yeah. to capture her with the ropes, just yeah. like Luke was, and then he so she somersaults out of it, and I was like, this is perfect. It's exactly yeah. what you want to see. Yeah. And again, I just hope when we get to these Marvel and DC shows, we get that same sort of thrill of like each episode. There's something visually where we're just like, that is the comic come to life in some way, and I, I think it's amazing. So I think Marvel has a good shot of, of doing the same thing. Um, DC, I don't know. We'll see with DC. I'm looking forward to their, their, their content, but I don't know if it's going to have this same sort of structure. It'll be interesting to see if, if it does. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for our show. Uh, um, if you, uh, unless you have anything to add, Brian, um, there's a lot of great news, a lot of game changing news that came out this week. Uh, I think we've covered them all. I think we've sort of, um, I, we can't wait for December 10th to see what Disney has in store. I, that's yeah, I, think our, I think our show next week will have some news too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I think it'll be all Disney centric unless Warner Brothers wants to compete and say something crazy, but I doubt it. They're going to let them do their thing because that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. Um, any last words, Brian? No, I think we've covered it. I mean, this was a really big week for fans of the industry. And I think it's just nice to have some certainty of new content. I mean, I think that's, you know, just to know, like. Just to know that they're coming out. They're actually going to come out. Yeah. Like now the next thing we just look for is, you know, what's how are they going to reset the release date schedule to spread these out over the course of the year? And, you know, go buy your subscription to HBO Max for Christmas and, you know, start the start the music. So. Really, 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 really exciting. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you once again for joining us on the Nerd Gen Report. We try to keep you up to date once a week, let you know what happened last week so that you can keep yourself informed. You don't have to be checking your phone or checking your alerts if, if for those people who aren't up on it like, like we are. You know, we sort of run down in, uh, the, the week's news and, and and let you know what's going on and, and sort of tell you how to decipher what 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 plans these these uh, studios have, these movies have, and the individuals behind it. Uh, thank you once again for uh, so the support that you guys have been giving us, uh, the likes, the the shares, the the subscriptions. Um, we're not we're at we're almost at a hundred. We're almost at a hundred. Uh, so let's get to a hundred. Let's share that, share this show because it's, you know, you know, there are a bunch of people that I've spoken to. Even, I had a parent teacher conference the other day and I, and the guy had a bunch of uh, uh, pictures of Marvel comics and stuff like that. And I say, hey, by the way, and got another subscriber. <laughs> 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 That's the way you got to do it. That's the way you got to do it. Uh, but thank you once again. B please be safe. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of others. Um, uh, keep what listen Bl uh, blood of zeus season two is supposed to come out i think we've mentioned it on the show i don't know if brian you have you have had a chance to watch it um but when you do check it out and let me know what you think about that but that just got announced um any new shows that have been have been announced new shows no i mean that that are being dropped that would be in our sort of neck of the woods not as no not that i know of I'd recommend watching Money Heist. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a damn good show. It's a damn good show. I think I've recommended it before. But one, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us. 
Uh, we'll see you next week. Stay safe and thank you. Take care.